Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. HFO TV is co sponsored by the construction, repair, and restoration firm J.R. Johnson, the real estate law firm Balchanik LLP, the tax deferral accommodator Butler Exchange Group, the mortgage banking firm Gantry Incorporated, and forensic building consultants providing building structural science services. Welcome back to HFO TV. I'm Greg Frick, partner at HFO Investment Real Estate. Today, we're lucky to have with us president of J.R. Johnson, Dell Starr. Dell, thank you for taking the time to uh, sit down and talk to our audience. Greg, thank you for inviting me. I'm uh, excited to have the opportunity. Thank you. I thought we could maybe just kind of, you know, for people that aren't familiar, you guys have been a wonderful sponsor on a lot of our events. Maybe give, you know, the audience a background of, you know, J.R. Johnson and how it's evolved from, I think it was a, a painting company a long time ago and has now gone to almost like a full service. Kind of talk about some of the levels of services you guys can provide, then we can kind of get into some details of some of the various ones. Sure. Uh, that That's easy. Uh, I love talking about our company. I'm very proud of the, the things we do and the services we provide. So uh, thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, well, I like to start these conversations with with the why we're in business. You know, we're in, we're in business to build quality partnerships. And we've been doing that for a very long time, over half a century. Um, and we're able to build those quality partnerships by living our core values of our company. And it starts with being professional and, and doing it right the first time. Uh, we're very good at designing and implementing the, the proper solution to whatever problem uh, may, may exist and then executing those details. And for people that don't know, you guys are not, I mean, you're more in you know, working on things that are already built, fixing, fixing things and things like that. I mean, you're not like a, I don't, you know, again, we've worked with you guys a long time. It's not more of a, a ground up, hey, I've got a lot, I want to build a building. It's more, I've got a building, let's look at the envelope, let's, let's look at some issues. I know you guys do, you know, fire restoration and things like that. Yes, we work on existing structures. Yep. So we do not do new construction. Uh, most of the structures that we work on oftentimes have people living or working in the structure while we're doing the project. So you've got a yeah, so you've got that uniqueness of dealing with the existing tenant or tenants and dealing trying to repair or, you know improve or whatever the the scope is. Whole different skill set than working on a unoccupied new construction job site where you don't have to worry about uh, those types of things. You know, a tenant maybe walking out their front door and not uh, having an entry landing there anymore, or you know, uh, workers having to enter their homes. Uh, because we're removing and replacing windows or we're fixing some damage from an exterior leak. So we had to get inside the unit. Um, so there's those things to consider that's different than doing new construction. And then from a geographical, I know we've, Washington, I mean, you guys cover the Pacific Northwest. Um, what's kind of, what's the scope there of the sandbox? Our primary service area is the Portland metro area. Okay. In Southwest Washington, but that's, um, that's, you know, we do work outside uh, of the region. I mean, we currently have a project right now in uh, Tacoma. It's a large uh, capital improvement exterior renovation project. Uh, we'll be putting on some new roofs on some buildings over on the coast uh, okay. later this spring and early summer. Uh, last year, we did a capital improvement uh, project in the Tri-City area. You know, we've, we, we've, we've done projects from, you know, north of Seattle to southern Oregon from the coast to Idaho. So pretty well covered then all around geographical from the Pacific Northwest then? Yeah, if it's a good fit for us and our partner, then we will, we'll, we'll, we will travel for those projects. If we're not okay. a good resource or a good fit, then, then, then we won't. And what's kind of, what is kind of the, you know, in multifamily? I and mean, what are kind of the projects you guys have been involved? I mean, I, was, I know we've been involved with you guys on roofing, siding, windows. Uh, foundation issues. I mean, the kind of the full gamut. Do you do, you know, interior things as well? Kind of give a shed a little light on that. We do two main things very well. So we have two main departments. Okay. Um, well, actually, we do lots of things well, but we have two main departments. We have what we call our construction department, which does a lot of the work that you just referred to as far as building envelope work. Uh, we call it construction, siding, windows, decks, roofs, paint, um, majority of it on multifamily properties. Um, we do both large scale capital improvement and exterior rehab projects. Um, it, they might stem from either litigated or non litigated construction defects, right? Uh, possibly it's just an older building. 
where the uh, existing envelope assemblies have kind of just outlived their useful life and need to be replaced. And then sometimes it's just a rebranding or updating of an existing property. Uh, we also do a lot of smaller scale maintenance type repairs. So maybe it's just a leaking roof or a leaking window rather than a whole property. You know, it's just, we have to diagnose one specific small problem and then fix it. Gotcha. And then the other half of our uh, business is what we call restoration. So that would be the fire and smoke damage, uh, the water damage, storm damage, a lot of insurance, you know, related work. They're not always covered by insurance. A lot, you know, lots, a lot of properties are self-insured, but you know, insurance type work. And that's called the restoration side of that's the, that's the restoration side of our company. Okay. So that, that's what we call it. Other companies call our construction side restoration. So, but for J.R. Johnson, we call that restoration. Got it. Uh, and we do asbestos testing and, and abatement uh, through that department, microbial growth and lead-based paint remediation, uh, biohazard cleanup. You know, uh, in the last year, it, it, we've been doing uh, as a part of the biohazard, because it is a biohazard, the COVID-19 cleaning services. Um, we have a number of, of partners that have asked us to, you know, do weekly or monthly cleanings in the common areas of their multifamily uh, buildings or do deep cleanings and more intensive cleanings, maybe in a, a unit that, that needs to be turned, someone moved out, but there's a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19, then there's a different level of cleaning. And so you guys have the ability to come in and address the certified is to address that. And yeah, we have all the equipment, we have all the certifications, uh, we have the, the chemicals or the materials needed to do all that work. So Del, that's what it brings up, you know, you brought about biohazard, lead paint, asbestos. I mean, I'm, you know, we've been doing this. We've got a lot of owners that have owned forever. You know, the old days of I'm going to have my maintenance guy go in and take out the old heating system that's, you know, got asbestos around it. Maybe talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the changing of where we are in terms of needing the certification, making sure that, you know, hopefully that, you know, they hire you guys, but if not, that your, your, your maintenance guy's got the proper, you know, certification to be able to do that work in this state because there's, you know, the liabilities of, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's nothing to mess around with nowadays. There's extreme risk. And I would caution anybody, any property owner or, or management company from having their own people do any of that work without at least consulting a contractor or expert like us to be able to advise them of, yes, that is okay for your, your own staff to do, or no, you need to have somebody that's certified and licensed to do that work. And that's been a big change in the last, you know, 10 years in this market. I mean, in terms of they keep adding more certification of, you know, how much lead based paint can you, you know, how much can you do within a unit before you trigger, you know, having to bring in, you know, certification and certified uh, maintenance gentlemen. So, yeah, it, it's constantly changing and you have to yeah. stay on top of those changes or you're at risk of getting yourself in trouble. And like I said, the, the best way to do that is to have a contractor partner to rely on so that, I mean, we're the expert. It's not really fair for you to ask maybe a site maintenance tech to be, right. be an expert in something like that. Let's have a real expert um, give us advice on what we need to do and then make a decision based on that. And that's a service you guys can provide to owners or management companies to, you know, come in and, hey, here's the scope of work. Is this beyond our, you know, existing crews level or do we need to bring in the, uh, the experts to handle this even from, a, you know, experience wise and just a regulation wise? Oh, yeah. Uh, and we can do the collecting like like a certified or licensed asbestos abatement company is supposed to actually collect the sample. So it's not even safe for the site uh, maintenance tech to actually collect a sample to see if it's is hazardous or not. So the first call should be to, to a, a company like J.R. Johnson, where we can go out there, we can collect the sample safely, have it tested, and you may not need us. It may not be hot. Uh, it, not, it isn't always hot. But it's better to check than not check. It's better to be safe than sorry. Because yeah. you can't tell by just looking at it. Right, right. You can make the assumption, but that gets everybody in trouble. So what, what's changed for you guys in this last year with COVID? Because I know in our world, in terms of doing due diligence and you know, entering units, there's just, you know, it's been very tough with COVID and have, you know, it's, it, I'm just curious, you know, when you guys are out doing a, you know, construction project, it's the added level of, 
of you know caution, I guess, and dealing with the tenants and how you're dealing with that. Well, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't harder. Yeah, um, it is a little harder uh, than it was before. Um, there's a little more diligence required in making sure that uh, everyone is wearing their face mask. You know, it, it, it's harder for the employees and the technicians out there because, you know, they're wearing safety glasses and then a face mask and then they're trying to breathe and it's, it's strenuous work and the safety glasses fog up. So just from a logistical standpoint, uh, it's a little harder. Um, and then also with, you know, uh, there's a lot, there's more PPE, you know, protective, uh, personal protective equipment required from entering units, uh, uh, cleaning your way in, cleaning your way out, uh, those sorts of things. And then, and then from a supply chain perspective, um, we're seeing, uh, running into some, some issues as well, where, you know, where we used to be able to get a material siding material order in a couple of weeks, maybe it's taken six weeks. Windows, we're seeing windows taking up, you know, two and a half months when we used to be able to get them in two weeks. So your timelines have got to extend out. And from what I've heard from everybody, you don't even know what, you know, last year there was issues of getting washer and dryers for units. So we had, you know, clients buying 100 washer and dryers, storing them because they were trying to turn units and couldn't get appliances. Then I heard it was ranges for a while. You know, I've heard the cost of timber has gone through the roof. So, so and, and the good thing is that, you know, most people are understanding that, okay, it's a little different world. It's not like it was. Um, there's, there's a good chance that there's going to be some unforeseen delays that maybe we wouldn't have experienced a year and a half ago. Right. Uh, but as long as, as we're working together as a team and everybody's communicating, then we, we, we successfully work our way through it. And have you, are, has it been, I mean, did you guys weather 20 pretty good in terms of business? I mean, we were down a little bit just in transaction volume. I'm curious on the construction side, you know, you've written Oregonian last week, talked about the permits on new construction significantly down in this market, but how on the kind of the construction and the restoration, how, how does the last year treated you guys? 2020 was a fabulous year for Jared Johnson. We good. had our, our uh, third highest revenue year uh, in our company's history. Um, and 2021 is we're, we're just building on that momentum. So 2021 um, is, is looking, we're expecting to have a very good year as well. Uh, 2020, uh, there was, you know, a couple months there back when the COVID uh, pandemic first started and, you know, the world was coming to an end because no one really knew what was going on. But after that, then things kind of leveled off, got back to normal, and business has been really good um, in our in our sector, you know. And I think the fact that we don't do new construction, where there is a lot more permit review and structural right. stuff uh, involved with it, kind of helps, you know. When we're dealing mostly with non-structural elements or light structural elements, it's easier to get a permit. Well, I know you said, I mean, everything needs to get rest, restored at some point in its life cycle and everything on, you know, new construction is kind of going up and down with the market. And I think we're going to be in a slowdown on the delivery of new construction, which then probably puts more pressure on some of the older product of, you know, is it time to update the windows, siding, infrastructure? I mean, these, you know, there's a lot of buildings in this market that were built in the seventies. I mean, you yeah. think back, I mean, they're 50 years old now. So, you know, yeah. systems, aren't made to last forever. But, you know, money has been fairly inexpensive uh, yes. in, the, in the last year. So that, I think that's one thing that's kind of helped offset the potential effects of the pandemic is that, you know, uh, money is available and it's relatively inexpensive. So people are able to improve their properties or, or do extensive maintenance on their properties where maybe otherwise they wouldn't be able to. And so if we've got clients that are thinking about, do they've owned a building for a long time, they can refinance and, you know, they could bring you guys in to kind of get an assessment. Hey, here's an assessment. You, you know, this may be an immediate need. This could be a, you know, wish list, but that's something you guys with your expertise, it's right in your wheelhouse. Oh, we do it weekly. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of due diligence work uh, with, our, with our partners. Um, you know, we've been working on multifamily properties in the Portland area for over 50 years. Right. Uh, we have a lot of knowledge of properties. A lot of times we don't even need to go look at the property because we've... No, I know. I've told you guys before. You've already, you know, you've already done three projects on it. So, oh, yeah, we know that building. Yeah. So, and for a lot of our, our partners, whether it's a due diligence or they just look, hey, we need a plan for, for bringing our property back up to the standard we want. 
we'll go out there, we will survey the property. And, and if they have a four year plan, then we'll kind of prioritize, okay, maybe this is what you want to do for year one and with this budget and year two with this budget. And by the end of whatever duration, your building is back to where it needs to be. Well, I know we've been very happy with everything we've been involved with, with, with you, you and your group. I mean, it's been very, I mean, the, the work that's been done has been great. Uh, like I said, one of the big things is, I hate to say, you see stuff that's done and you, they got to come back out again. And, you know, typically we see a project that's done by J.R. Johnson. We're, you know, great. We can, we know it was done right the first time and they can move on and look at, you know, if there's other things going on. So we appreciate that for sure. And if people want to learn more about your firm, they can go to the website down below. Uh, Dell, I want to thank you for taking the time to introduce the company again, and I'll be looking forward to working with you some more in 21. So, Thank you, Greg. I appreciate the uh, invitation, and I uh, look forward to speaking with you again. Sounds good. Be safe. Thank you. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hfore.com for more information.